came here in 1984, August, from Green Street. Most of the farm here and bought some more in about 1987. So How big is it now? 271 hectares. Yeah, that would keep you honest. <laughs> what are you doing with it? Specialist arable, I call myself. Um, vegetable seeds, wheat, barley, processed peas, seed peas, um, sheep, that's slamming ewes, and um, fattening steers for five star. You are using GPS, this is part of your innovative farming bit. Yes, that's right. Um, about four years ago, we um, purchased GPS. We also purchased a precision drill and sprayer at the same time, and we already had a intro cultivator. So we thought, well, if we did the whole thing and justify the GPS, so we can actually integrate everything into one. So how are you using the GPS? Because it's more than keeping your uh, your, your rows straight. Yeah, well, the row straight is just the first bit and of the many aspects. Uh, it controls the sprayer so that we, um, it controls the rate of the spray, it controls where it sprays so we're not over spraying the boundary. Um, we can put exclusion zones in so we don't spray certain parts of the field or if we've got two crops in the field we can stop when you go over the edge it won't spray the other crop. And it's all section control so it's all automatic. So you're using some sort of mapping system? Yeah, that's all part of the GPS that comes with it and logging where we've been. Um, that's the sprayer uh, with the drilling and intro cultivating. Um, that's just basically the precision drill. We do the normal grain drill is also operated with GPS. Um, we're just going on to controlling the fertiliser on our precision drill via the GPS. Let's talk a wee bit about that because you seem to have a, a very solid canopy of the uh, wheats and so mm. forth. It's just um, good pump population, good management. I use a cirrus wheat calculator, so my decision support's very good. So your, your numbers of plants per hectare are actually probably more than most people's? I don't know about that, but I do aim for probably 170 instead of 150. I find that if I keep the water up, I can actually make use of all those. Tell me about your nitrogen theories. That was um, on the carrots, and um, a few years ago I s reduced the nitrogen use on the carrots and finding, I got a feeling that I was actually getting better disease control, well not as much disease in the carrots, um, so that was sort of, and then last year we had a density trial in the carrots and one of the higher densities was showing looking quite nitrogen deficient, so we tested it and it wasn't too bad, so we ended up putting a nitrogen trial over the top of the density trial and um, came out with the fact that even though it was looked yellow and deficient in nitrogen it's actually still the highest yielding. So we're doing more work this year on trying to get a handle on how much and or how little really. Or how so. little, yes, yeah. So it's all good for the environment. Speaking of the environment, integrated pest management or IPM as you call it? Yes, um, well, when I was in the States about three or four years ago, we were in Columbia Basin and looking at um, different things and sort of realised that they actually couldn't control anything because everything was resistant to everything. And thought, well, this must be a better way. I'd sort of known about it here since the 70s and it really never, never caught on in the seed industry. It's big in the fresh market industry and uh, got on to that, came home and trialled it and uh, realised that a lot of the chemicals I could put on after dark and actually they weren't broken down with the sunlight so I actually got a bit better job done because the insects are out crawling around at that time so I was actually applying the chemical directly to the insects and um, getting very good control. It's all because I can drive at night with a GPS. Which brings back the GPS into the conversation. You're also looking at, at predators rather than spray. Yes, well, I'm in tr well that's the beauty of IPM, you're actually killing the, the, the bad insect like the aphid or the um, diamondback moth or what leaf miner and um, leaving all the predators there to actually re-attack anything that's coming back in so you're actually increasing the numbers per area of predators. John, you've got a bit of irrigation. You're pretty close to the coast, obviously, but you were still using a bit of water? 
Yes, um, just really getting started up at the moment with the crop mix. We're not all on and all off. Um, at the moment, I'm sort of only about a third operating. Um, I've used Neutron probes and the Aquatrack program to actually plan it out. So I know I'll probably work in the weekend, but I'll be on top of it. So where to from here? Just more of the GPS and, and learning more about it so you can get more from it. Yeah, I think that's right, Rob. There's lots of new things coming on this horizon with remote sensing and just, um, variable rates and all sorts of other things, which is all sort of, it's a fairly steep learning curve and it's trying to get your head around what one can help you the most at the time. Farming's come a long way since your dad was farming with you. Yes, yes, that's right. You know, an eight-horse team at Sandy Knowles is a bit different to a 2010 tractor with uh, GPS and... The satellite, fire goes yeah, ahead. Yes, yeah.